Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Japanese horror for a moment. For anyone who's a horror fan, it is a known fact that the Japanese are absolute masters of psychological horror. There are a whole plethora of movies that Hollywood released that were originally Japanese. The shining example of this was The Ring, a movie that, when released in the West, created a huge splash and is still remembered to this day. But despite all of this, this tends to not be something that carries on over into anime. To have a show come out that's under the horror genre is rare in of itself, but to have a show come out into the horror genre that's both good and commercially successful is rarer still. Now, whenever the topic of horror anime comes up, there are always two titles that come to mind. Whether or not you think they are good is a different story, but they are pretty much synonymous with being an anime fan. If you are an anime fan, you know these titles. The first one, of course, is Elfin Lead, with its incredibly shocking first episode and its very somber and melancholic tones. And the second is Higurashi no Nako Koro ni. And today, I'll be taking a look at the most recent addition to this franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Fiction Reviews, and today, a review of Higurashi no Nako Koro ni Kaku, Outbreak. And so, without further ado, let's get this started. Higurashi no Nako Koro ni is a 2006 anime based off a visual novel of the same name created by 7th Expansion. It follows the story of six friends in a small town called Hinamizawa where things aren't as peaceful as they would appear. The story is set up in kind of a Groundhog Day situation, where at the beginning of every arc, time will reset and the story will begin again. In every arc, one of the characters becomes distrustful of others and begins killing. However, it's the who, the what, the where, the why, and the how that gets changed around with every arc. These arcs can also be split up into two categories, question and answer. Question being the one that we see first, and then answer being told from a different perspective and filling in the little gaps and pieces that were left out from the question arc. The series concluded after two seasons, however continued on with two OVA series. And now, we have a third. The story begins, well, where every Higurashi story begins, but this time things are almost thrown immediately into the worst possible scenario. The Hinamizawa virus has come into the public light, and the government takes action and quarantines the village. With the stress of the quarantine and discovery of the virus, along with spreading rumors, paranoia and restlessness begin to settle in on a massive scale as the virus rapidly evolves. Now, if you've only seen Season 1 of Higurashi, you've probably realized by now that you don't have too much of a grand idea as to what I'm saying. This is because Outbreak is a side story of all of Higurashi, specifically Seasons 1 and 2. As such, you have to have at least seen Seasons 1 and 2 of Higurashi in order to watch Outbreak, because there are a bunch of details that carry over. The story's pacing is really awkward, especially in the first half or so. Time seems to slip by without any real warning, and before you know it, weeks have gone by. Then, at the halfway point, it goes Tarantino on us and begins again but told from a different perspective. This is kind of like Higurashi's usual question and answer arcs, but it's really weird because the answer arc is happening in the middle of the question arc. So you're left with this big cliffhanger and you're just sitting there waiting to get back to the point that you were at. Nevertheless, the story is pretty well written, with the exception of one small little scene with one small little detail. Bugs in our brains control the world! What? And you knew about this? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. What? For God's sake! Yes! Now do as I say! And captures the dark atmosphere we know from the series, while also sprinkling in a post-apocalyptic kill-or-be-killed vibe, which is really cool and makes it pretty interesting and fresh again. Overall, it is a story that, after hearing it, one would immediately know is Higurashi, and fits right in place with the rest of the franchise. The characters in Outbreak remain the same, but majorly features Keiichi and Rena, while also omitting most if not all of the side characters. Like most side material, there is no development for our characters this time around since we already know all that is needed to be known. 
So, in short, they are all the same characters that we know and love. Well, except for Rika, who seems to be a little... Uh... Distant... This time? <clears throat> the only thing that may seem a little jarring is how quickly and suddenly Keiichi and Rena are just okay with indiscriminately killing people. In the series, no matter who the killer ended up being, they had a definite target and a definite reason for doing the things that they did. So this can be quite the gigantic leap between one extreme and the other. But desperate times and desperate measures, I suppose. Besides, Hatchet Girl's back in action. Who the hell are we to complain about that? This addition to the franchise is once again brought to us by Studio Dean, who, to say are hit or miss, is a bit of an understatement. They have this strange ability where they can be quite crap one moment and then turn around and be quite brilliant the next. This can be easily seen over the course of the franchise, with the first season being very very rough save for some of the more important scenes, then generally getting better for the second season, and then looking great for an OVA series that some of us, I'm sure, would rather forget. So, if you're a Higurashi fan that's always wanted to see an addition to the series with its original tone, while also having the high quality animation and designs from Higurashi Kira, then you're in luck, because this is exactly what it is. The animation and designs are pretty much one for one with Higurashi Kira, so Outbreak looks pretty damn good. But this time around it's toned down a little darker to match with the darker tones that are being presented, naturally. The soundtrack is used very sparingly in Outbreak, especially in the first half, so the atmosphere and the setting lets the intensity of the situation settle in on its own. When the underscore is used, it's exactly what you would expect from something in the horror genre. Forboding strings, piano, synth, booming percussion, all staples in the horror genre. But the one thing that I want to make special note of is the music used for the credit sequence. It's a rendition of a song called Dear You, a fantastic song from the original visual novel that was never carried over into the show. A strange note to make, yes, but a very important one for fans of the franchise. Higurashi Outbreak is a really good addition to the series, but that doesn't mean it's actually good, per se. Although it's written really well despite its pacing issues, there are still plenty of arcs from the original series that are done way better. As a result of this, I can only see Higurashi fans being more or less content with Outbreak, and really nothing more. And if you have not seen or you did not like Higurashi, this is not something you're going to watch and enjoy, because it's exactly what you would expect out of Higurashi, and it's laced with previously known information from the original series. As for my rating, I've decided to give Higurashi Outbreak a considerate. It's a fine watch, but unfortunately only those who have a full genuine interest will find any entertainment in it. So as I have been saying this entire review, if you're a Higurashi fan, Go ahead, check it out. You may like it, you may not like it. But at the end of the day, it's still the franchise we love. Well, that's it for me. This is Fiction Reviews, signing out. Now do as I say! <laughs>